probably yeah. agree on. Yeah, the uh, playoff team for sure. So I, do you. I mean, I tell you what, I don't think there was a more accurate state. And if, I, if they struggle again, I mean, I don't think there's any way you can keep Alex Grinch, but. What's up, y'all? Bud Elliott here. It's my cover three college football summer school. And today we are talking Wisconsin. No better place to go for that than my man, Evan Flood of Badgers 247. Evan, well, welcome back to the show, dude. Thanks. I uh, never thought I'd be in summer school again, but uh, here we are. It's, you know, second, third grade all over again. Uh, I guess I didn't learn anything. <laughs> oh, man. Hey, you know, I, sometimes we got to get held back and it's right. it, it's OK. <laughs> uh, I'm sure at times last year, uh, it felt like Wisconsin had been held back under the first year of Luke, Fick Luke Fickle. It was a you know, major transition there at head coach. W where did you see growth from this team last year? I think. Late November, you finally started to see that offense look like we thought it was going to look. I think last year at this time, I kind of hit the pause button on everything and said, you know, they're not going to be able to hit the ground running. That is just too big of an overhaul. We, we saw it in spring. Uh, you think you're hoping by midseason they would kind of hit their stride. Then obviously Tanner Mordecai goes down with the broken hand and they kind of have to hit the reset button with Braden Locke as a backup. Uh, but specifically in that LSU game, I, I think everybody kind of thought, this is an offense we can get behind, uh, you know, if this shows up in, in 2024 and, and beyond. Now, took them a long time to get there. You obviously have to put in a new quarterback now with Tyler Van Dyke coming in over from Miami. Uh, so you're kind of starting over again uh, fresh uh, in, in that sense. But uh, offensively, uh, obviously, didn't pan out the way I think a lot of people thought, especially against what was really a, a very manageable schedule and, and some weak defenses. The Badgers really just weren't able to pick apart. But uh, towards the back end, specifically, I think second half of that Nebraska game where it looked like for a second they were about to get blown out, uh, found something offensively because, uh, you know, in that LSU game, there was a lot of time you're saying, which team's the SEC team here? Because Wisconsin was running up and down the field uh, all over the Tigers. So if they can carry that momentum into 2024, obviously I know – with a loaded schedule, you know, a successful season might be seven, eight wins. But, you know, if you can hang with some of these potent offenses that they're going to face, I think it'll make a lot of people feel good about what happened in, in terms of letting Paul Chris go, kind of ripping the nuts and bolts out of this program and uh, this night and day change that they're certainly going through right now. I, I remember being at the uh, the Under Armour All-America practices here where I live in Orlando and, and a couple of those recruiting guys were standing around uh, watching that bowl game there at the hotel bar. Dude, this Wisconsin is cooking these guys. Okay, this is uh, this is this is pretty fun to watch. I'll I'll ask you this: Where is this team, if anywhere, clearly better than they were last year? The defense. I don't. I don't know if many people expected them to step back the, the way they did. Uh, but but that was quite a, a transition too, going to, to Mike Tressel, who you know typically has run more of a three three five. Uh, Wisconsin needed to get faster more athletic and longer at the linebacker position to kind of compensate for all the light fronts that they play. And, and not that, you know, they're starting inside linebackers, Jordan Turner and Muma and Jong Meda were unathletic, but you, you need a different breed of player back there. And, and Wisconsin really just uh, had a makeover in, in the transfer portal. Uh, the guy I really liked coming over from Arkansas and who, who played under Trestle and Luke Fickle at Cincinnati, Jaheim Thomas, you know, he's a long six, four, inside linebacker that they can do a lot of things with. They're going to line him up uh, on the edge. They're going to send him on blitzes up the middle and, and kind of be a uh, havoc wreaker, something Wisconsin hasn't really had since, since Nick Herbig. Uh, I really like the Syracuse transfer, Leon Lowry, uh, another outside linebacker uh, with, with speed, terrific get off length to, to affect uh, the passing lanes as well. I think he could be a difference maker up front. And then they got, you know, one of the bigger portal wins in, in Tackett Curtis, who, uh, started at USC as a true freshman. We didn't get to see him in spring because he was recovering from offseason surgery. So, you know, we don't know really know where he is, but, you know, pair him with Jake Cheney, who was extremely productive and, and had a breakout year as, as a junior. Christian Allegro, who uh, played a lot as a true freshman last season, another 6'4", long athletic kid. Uh, this is going to be a different linebacker core than, than Wisconsin had, and I think it's going to help them uh, in year two of this transition uh, to, to what Mike Tressel wants and then make Wisconsin a faster, more athletic defense in, in general because uh, they don't have a lot of defensive line depth. So they've got to play uh, lighter fronts, and, and you need some dudes back there to help compensate for that. Let's fast forward about, uh, I don't know, six weeks from now. We're in Indianapolis at Big Ten Media Day. Who's a guy that probably won't get voted to an all-Big Ten team in the preseason that you think has a pretty good shot to be there come the end of the season? 
Maybe Ches Malusi. Uh, I, I know a lot of people forget about him because of his injury history. Obviously, he's got to get through an entire season. But but I thought last year he was playing his best ball in, in this transition to, to Phil Longo's air raid up tempo offense. Uh, really benefited him well. I mean, a lot of people forget that, you know, he was the starter in 2021 before Braylon Allen kind of burst onto the scene and uh, became a star at Wisconsin. And and he actually got more carries than than Allen in week two against Washington State, started that Big Ten opener uh, against uh, Purdue before he uh, broke his leg. So I think he's a guy that Phil Longo really likes and uh, is really, um, you know, Braylon Allen, Great tailback, obviously, but just didn't fit that offense the, the way they needed to. Uh, they, they need a guy who's a little more shifty, uh, a little more make you miss ability. He can catch the ball out of the backfield. That, that's kind of what Chesma Lucy uh, brings to the table. And, and he's come back, looked as good as ever in, in spring, went through an entire spring, um, and, and pairs with the Oklahoma transfer, Tawi Walker, really nicely. I, I think they'll split carries. I think that'll probably take away Malusi's ability to potentially make, uh, you know, first or, or second team, but. Uh, he, he's a guy that I think has a ton of value to Wisconsin and, and maybe not quite known uh, around the Big Ten as much as he should be just because he suffered three consecutive major injuries here. So if he can get through a whole season, uh, I think we might see the best of him and, and if he can pick up where he left off in that Purdue game before that injury. You mentioned the depth at linebacker being particularly good. Uh, receiver, a lot of guys coming back who have played a, a lot of football. Uh, is there somebody there who you think could break out and become like a, a next level star? It's tough to say break out uh, just uh, with what, what they have re- returning, but but a guy a lot of people are high on is Tretch Kikahana, uh, who played a couple games as a true freshman last year, missed most of the season because he was injured, but came on in that bowl game against LSU, uh, was thrown into the fire due to some uh, injuries and, and opt-outs. He had four catches, and, and, and he's arguably the most electrifying player what Wisconsin has when it comes to somebody with the ball. Uh, in their hands that the kid out of Hawaii can can simply fly and and you know how much is he going to be able to break out behind Wisconsin's leading receiver Will Pauling you know that that's tough to say but but they'll certainly get him on the field and um, you know Wisconsin doesn't get this type of speed very often so you know when they got it they got to use it. Will Pauling of course an absolute uh, fantasy football beast uh, everybody drafted him there in a cop a top couple of rounds. Uh, let me ask you a question on, on the quarterback position so they they, t- they take Tyler Van Dyke from Miami who uh you know, three seasons ago was really, you know, really good for Miami. And then, the, you know, changing coaching staff down there for the Hurricanes. Uh, Wisconsin kind of betting on a bounce back. I, I read your, your excellent coverage there at Badgers 247. It seems like maybe he hasn't fully locked up the job yet. Is this a, a situation where this is like a real position battle going into fall? I think it depends on, on what you want to believe. I think most of us are under the impression this isn't a real quarterback battle. Um, you know, how much are you just trying to make sure you get uh, Braden Locke more reps and in case another injury happens, he has to be thrown into the fire. You know, they also have his brother committed in 2025 too. So you obviously want to keep, uh, you know, the older brother happy as well. I'm not speculating that's what they're doing but you know it's obviously a thought that's going to run across your mind when you bring in an established starter like Tyler Van Dyke and don't necessarily hand him the job the way they did Tanner Mordecai a a year ago but you know from what we've seen it is a true battle I mean the reps were split 50-50 uh Locke certainly I think a lot of people too um who who covered the team would would agree with this this was a lot closer than we would have anticipated it, it would be you know I would say Van Dyke over the last week and a half, two weeks, started to flex his muscles and, and cement himself as, I don't want to say the clear guy for the job, but, but he's certainly a leg up going into, into fall camp. But, you know, as far as reps went, it, it was 50 um, 50. It was far different than what we saw a year ago where Tanner Mordecai got everything and he was allowed to hit the ground running. You know, Van Dyke had to take his share with, with the number twos. Um, so how much that that may have impacted what we saw this spring in terms of you know this offense trying to take a, the next step, I'm not sure. But you know a lot, you know I'm always asked, is Wisconsin in a better spot than they were a year ago at the quarterback position? Right now, I, I don't think you can say yes. But you know we haven't really seen Van Dyke or you know if it is Locke take over the reins as the, the clear cut number one guy yet. So uh, until that happens, it, it's tough to say where this offense really is. When he was good, it. it- he was never like a super fast processor, at least from what I had seen at Miami. Yeah. But the the arm strength was really, really pretty damn good. It, it did you see that from him in in, uh, in spring ball? Because I know last year and especially in twenty twenty two, he had some arm issues. Like there was the game 
uh, it might have been the FSU game actually down there in Miami in 2022 where it, he threw a ball, wasn't contacted, and then like grabs his arms, like almost like a baseball pitcher uh, with, with like a, a non, you know, literally a non contact uh, arm aggravation there. What, what did you see from his arm strength? Yeah, he's a guy, he can be late with the football. And, and I think watching above in, in the box ish, you know, that I think that kind of bothered me a little bit at, at times. Like you said, not a super quick processor and in this offense with the receiver talent especially what they tried to do last year where they're most successful let's just get the ball out and go and, and let's let the playmakers do do their thing and, and that's not really how this offense looked but, but yeah he's a guy that um if his first read or second read isn't there or he misses something he, he does have the ability to still push the ball downfield and, and beat the safety coming over the top or fire something uh, across the middle now like most guys with above average arm strength that can get you in trouble at, at times. Um, and you believe in it too much. And he did deal with, you know, some of those issues in the first half uh, of spring ball, but uh, I would say arm strength is definitely an underrated issue, even though he's not necessarily a guy that's going to stretch the field beyond 30, 40 yards a ton. Sure. But when it comes to those second level um, or, or longer second level throws, 20, 25 yard range, he's guy doesn't need to step into it really. I mean, he can do some, some pretty impressive stuff off his back foot as well. That's that's good to hear. He's back and looking uh, looking healthier there in your arm category. Uh, the schedule, as you, you alluded to, also pretty healthy. Uh, no Ohio State or Michigan, and you do get Purdue, Rutgers, Northwestern, which I feel like kind of establishes a good floor for this team. But I mean, Evan, there are a lot of tricky spots here that, that are just mm -hmm. like if you if you know the Big Ten as, as I know you do. What are some of the ones that really stand out to you as like, damn, that's that's pretty tough. Well, obviously, I think everyone's eyes go to that three-game stretch in, in October and, and November where you get Penn State at home, you go at Iowa, and, and then you got to host Oregon at, at home. And, you know, I think if you're Wisconsin, if you can get one of those, uh, it, it's a win. But uh, all, there's a very real chance you go 0-3 in, in those games considering what, you know, Penn State, Oregon did last season and, and Iowa, you know, is, is, is tough. I know that that one frustrates a, a lot of people and it's not just Wisconsin fans. Everybody gets frustrated the way they lose uh, to the Hawkeyes because in a lot of those games, all you have to do is really punt successfully or yeah. avoid a, a special teams meltdown and, and you beat them, but nobody <laughs> seemed to do it. So, uh, you know, that, that three game stretch right there is the one where I don't want to say make or break because you I mean, you get at Nebraska, in the end against Minnesota, two winnable games. Like you said, the three games before that, you could be three and zero. Purdue, Rutgers, Northwestern. But but the way the schedule breaks, you, you really just don't have margin for error. You know, if you want to get back to a bowl game, you I mean you're you're gonna have to you know, win the games you're, you're supposed to win if you want to keep this bowl st streak going. And especially when you look at what happens in, in mid September, where you know you got Alabama coming to town in the non conference finale, and then you open up Big Ten play at at USC. Uh, that, that three game stretch that you that you alluded to in the beginning. I mean, I think you, there's a lot of them. We don't talk about it because the big names aren't there, but I think that might be the most important part of the schedule. Uh, you know, especially if you drop those two games against the Trojans uh, and, and Crimson Tide, uh, just to get your feet under you and, and make sure you put yourself uh, in position to get back to a bowl game. Cause I mean, that could be, you know, five wins before mid October right there. All right. So can't say quarterback. Cause that's just too easy. I'll, I'll get you out of here on this. Who is the guy who has to step up the most and, and maybe reach his ceiling a year ahead of schedule if Wisconsin's going to comfortably make a bowl? You know, not not be sweating a bowl going into that final weekend. There's a lot of guys that, that come to my head, uh, but but just in terms of somebody that I think could be a, a real X factor and, and maybe give the Badgers something they haven't had in the past, I would say the cornerback Nizier for for Kareen. Um, <laughs> Wisconsin got a breakout season from Ricardo Hallman as a sophomore, led the nation in interceptions, but, but they've always kind of lacked that plus six foot one guy who, who can, all, who can play on an Island. And he's a guy that came over from division two Ram Valley state performed better than anybody could, could have imagined. I think started five of the last six games, got in over his head in a little, in some of the games against Ohio state and, and LSU got picked on a little bit, but you know, he, he's got size. Wisconsin typically doesn't get from the cornerback position, um, you already know teams are going to shy away from throwing at home in this season. So he's got a lot, of, he, he's going to have a lot of balls thrown his way. Um, and, 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 you know, Holman, as good as he is, isn't a big guy, you know, he's five, nine, five, 10, doesn't run exceptionally well, but he, but he's very instinctive. Um, you know, if you can have four Korean 
steal some of those reps against the big time number one receivers or hold his own on the other side of the field. I think that gives Wisconsin's defense a great chance as well, in addition to what they've done at the linebacker position to, to be a lot better. And, and, you know, he talked about the schedule and some of these offenses they're going to face. They're, they're going to need somebody to kind of make those momentum changing plays, uh, change, you know, give, give the offense short fields. Uh, I think he's the guy. Um, at least defensively, that that if he steps up and has a big year, you know, it potentially changes the outlook and the, and the trajectory of the season. No doubt about it. Evan, I really appreciate the time. I know I'll be, be tuning in to Badgers 247, reading your preseason coverage, and obviously throughout the season, we'll have to have you on again soon, man. Yeah, thanks again.